Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi s-salamin alayhi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa la'udwana illa ala al-zalameen. Wa la'aqibatu al-muttaqeen. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa sallam tasliman kathira. So this is like take 300. Um, I have been trying to shoot this video for you several times and uh, try different devices, but I'm not really too good with technology, so as you can see, which is why I've just decided to resign myself to the webcam, just to give you something, inshallah. But this is Ramadan, it's all about simplicity, so enjoy it, inshallah ta'ala, even though the voice might be a little funny and the picture might be a little fuzzy. Uh, try to take the benefit from it, inshallah ta'ala, if you can. And in these few minutes, I'm just going to share with you one reflection, a reflection on what I believe is one of the most powerful and profound verses in the Qur'an, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you may have heard this being recited, you should have heard this being recited in the first few nights of Taraweeh. Allah Azza wa says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. Wa asa an tuhibbu shay'an wa huwa sharrun lakum. You might hate something that is actually better for you, and you might love something that is actually worse for you, that is actually not good for you. And subhanAllah, the reason why I feel like this verse is often misunderstood is because usually when we think about this verse, and when we think about the whole topic of Qadr and the whole topic of divine decree and Allah knows what's best for you, uh, what we try to do to console ourselves or to console others that are going through a hard time is we'll tell someone, for example, who just lost a job, look, something good might come out of this. Or, you know, someone who goes through a family tragedy, something good might come out of this. Um, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not telling us in, these ver in this verse that the situation that may arise out of this, out of this you know, perceived tragedy might be better for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying al-amru, you know, that the amr might be khayrun lakum, that the amr might be better, for, that the situation might be better for you. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa huwa khayrun lakum, that very thing that you hate, that very thing that you think is bad for you, that very same thing that you think is ca that's causing you all this distress is actually better for you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and you do not know. And subhanAllah, this is something that is, um, that's, that's so profound. And you know, obviously, you know, if I lose my job or if I'm going through a rough time, family tragedy or, or a harsh time with my relationship, obviously it's very hard to convince me at that moment that this is actually better for me. That, that, this, that this thing, that this tragedy that's taking place in my life actually will do good for me. But this is where you, you draw the line in terms of tawakkul and just bare belief in qadr. Now, of course, bare belief in Qadr, you know, having the fundamental belief in divine decree, this is what establishes you as a believer. It's one of the six pillars of Iman, um, and it's one of the, it's, it's the first uh, concept in which we found a, a whole group of Muslims deviating away from the straight path. And actually, you know, according to Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu al-Bukhari, al-Qadariya, the people that deny Qadr, becoming disbelievers as a result of denying al-Qadr, who just came to terms with, with these hard things in their lives by saying, you know what, Allah doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not will uh, the future. There's no such thing as predestination. Of course, this is a form of kufr. Then you have the bare belief in Al-Qadr, which is to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of everything, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, knows what, what has happened, what's happening now and what's going to happen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed things based upon his wisdom. And this is also another very powerful, you know, this is, this is the bare minimum of, of belief in Qadr that we should have. Having this makes you a believer. But there is a third station. And that third station is al-ridha bil qadr, as the scholars call it, to be pleased with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know when Allah talks about the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not just say radiallahu anhum, that Allah is pleased with them. Allah says waradu an, that they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being pleased with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being pleased with the divine decree. And to sort of draw this, you know, to, to understand this contrast, uh, one of the great companions, and this is always narrated in the books of Al-Qadr, Shifa uh, al-Alid by Imam al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he, he puts a lot of emphasis on this, this hadith. Uh, the great companion, Ubadat ibn Samad, radiallahu anhu, while he's passing away, he says to his son, Ya Bunay, so this is his will to his son, Innaka lan tajida ta'mul iman, you will not be able to taste the sweetness of faith. حَتَّى تَعْنَمَ أَنَّمَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ Until you know without a doubt, with full certainty, that that which has struck you was not meant to have missed you. 
And that which missed you, meaning something that you, that you thought was coming, that you wanted to come your way, that which missed you was not meant to have struck you. So subhanAllah, you know, this is a whole nother station. When you are actually pleased with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when something happens to you, you are able to say, you know what, Allah knows best. And you know what, if I have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if I'm steadfast and I seek the reward of this, if I have sabr and I, and I have ihtisab and I seek the reward of this, this can actually benefit me in both this world and the next. Whereas if I'm not patient with it, as Ali radiallahu anhu said, you have the option. You know, when, when you're struck with a tragedy, if you're struck with a tragedy in this life, either you can, you know, be impatient, but not say anything bad, not say anything displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not seek the reward of it. And the only thing that you're going to get out of it is that you're not going to be punished. You know, something bad happened to your life. You were not patient. But at the same time, you didn't resort to kufr or anything like that. You didn't start disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you didn't have true patience. So you lose, you know, you're still struck with the depression. The tragedy is still going to be there. The situation is not going to, to change. And you're not going to be rewarded in the hereafter for it. But if you're patient and you seek the reward, that makes things lighter on you in dunya, that, that makes the tragedy you know, less severe because you're making the best out of your situation and you get rewarded for it in the akhirah because as the Messenger ﷺ said, the believer is not struck with anything, you know, not even something as small as a thorn or any form of anxiety or any form of tragedy or hardship except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies him from him, some of his sins. So this is a whole nother uh, level and you might be wondering why is the name of this video the feeding tube because this is what this is the, the analogy that I want you to think of and I'll end with this inshallah ta'ala you know imagine a person who's being sustained in the hospital who's just holding on to their bare you know just just trying to live you know just trying to at least have a heartbeat you know and they're not able to eat and drink anymore they're not conscious and they have that feeding tube going in now that food is sustaining them, but they're not tasting the sweetness of that food. They don't have an appetite. It doesn't matter what's going into their body um, in terms of, you know, the, the taste of it, because they just need that to sustain themselves, right? But at the end of the day, you can't live your entire life on that feeding tube. And usually a person who's at that situation where he's just being fed through that feeding tube, usually that person is on, at the brink of death. And eventually, you know, the feeding tube is going to be removed and that person is going to die. So essentially to believe in Qadr is that feeding tube. To have belief in it is that feeding tube. Now to be pleased with it is to be able to taste the sweetness of Iman. iman. You won't be able to taste the sweetness of Iman though until you know without a doubt that Allah knows best for you. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is planning these things and Allah plans based on wisdom. So I'm going to seek the reward of this and that will make things lighter on me in this life and in the next. So that is the best situation to be in. The worst situation, when you're not pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr, where you're always left saying, why me? Eventually what that's going to lead to is you're going to start questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. You'll start questioning qadr itself. And that's why Ibn Abbas anhu said and Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, they both made powerful statements along the lines of that, you know, whoever establishes his belief in qadr establishes his belief in tawheed. This is where you truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever destroys his belief in Qadr, destroys his Tawheed, destroys his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us pleased with him and, to, and pleased with his decree. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who when they are struck with any form of tragedy, when they are struck with any form of anxiety, they simply respond, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we belong and to him we return. To, so to whoever is watching this video and who is going through a hard time, be patient and seek the reward inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for you. And he surely will make things easy for you just by your knowing that he is capable of making things easy for you. Things will become easy for you, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan al-husni istima'akum. I'll see you all next week, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa